looking forward to this. <laughs> John Kennedy O'Connor is not only the author of the book, The Eurovision Song Contest, The Official History, he's also a mad keen fan of the spangliest event on Europe's calendar. He's at the Eurovision venue in Copenhagen. He joins us now. John, wonderful to speak with you again. It's great to be back with you, Scott. And what a, what a build-up, what an introduction. Yes, the spangliest <laughs> night of the year is here again. <laughs> uh, I say this with the greatest respect. What's the point of Eurovision? <laughs> Well, as Yumi was saying, the, the prize for winning this is like a 40 billion euro headache next year. That's about all you get out of it these days. But no, it's the wonderful chance for Europe to come together. Have fun. It's the biggest party in the world. It come, you can come to it and say, wow, that's a great song. You can say, oh gosh, I can't stand that one. And whatever your opinion is, it's completely legitimate. It's just a great time to get together and have some fun. OK, I'm going to play the devil's advocate here because that's just the role for Scott and I in the studio here, John. We can pay out these acts and say they're trashy and have a laugh, but... ABBA won Eurovision in 1974 for Waterloo, yes. so they've made it. Celine Dion has also won, Julio Iglesias. So you'd have to say this is also a bit of a kind of, you know, stomping ground for new talent. It can be, absolutely. Now, in fairness, let's not pretend otherwise. It has been the death knell for several singers as well. I mean, Engelbert Humperdinck, Bonnie Tyler, they've never been heard of again. But no, you're absolutely right. And of course, they were celebrating the 40th anniversary of ABBA's victory this year. Um, and don't forget, Olivia Newton-John's been here, Gina G's been here. Australia's had a lot to do with Eurovision over the years. And has something to do with this year as well, John, with Jessica Malboy performing there, not in the official competition, but nonetheless performing there. What do we have to do to get Australia in Eurovision? And don't say move the continent closer to Europe. Well, now, it's funny you should say that, Scott, because if you actually watch the second semi-final, Australia are doing exactly that. Uh, there's a really, really cute piece with SBS's Julia Zamora. I'm not going to give too much away, but make sure oh, everyone in Australia <laughs> is tuned in for that because they're really trying this year to be in, involved. And you're absolutely right, Jessica Mayboy is singing in the semi-final. She's come all the way from Darwin. She's got an Australian astronaut with her as well. I'm not going to give too much away, but definitely keep an eye on that one. All right. John, give us a, a sense of what it's like to be there at Euro Vision, you know, that media centre's massive. I can only imagine the life that goes on outside this competition of fans and, and people coming to watch. It, just paint us a picture of what it's like to be there. It, it really is incredible. I mean, our hosts have been amazing, but they always are. Um, you know, the Swedes last year, the Azeris the year before, they, they really want to show the world what they can do. This, um, well, I don't know what you describe it, this uh, concrete box behind me is actually where the... Um, venue is this year. They've created it from a disused shipyard. They put so much effort in. There's a Eurovision island that they've created this year. Our Danish hosts have done wonderful, uh, wonderful work. The excitement is huge. <laughs> There's going to be 10,000 screaming fans in the auditorium for each of the shows, each of the semi-finals, each of the final. I'm commentating this year for San Marino. Thank you so much for including Valentina in your montage there. It's our <laughs> first time ever ever in the Eurovision final. And here is San Marino, population of 32,000, competing against Russia, population of 250 million. You can only get that in Eurovision. <laughs> now, talking of Russia, do broader Euro politics seep into Eurovision, John, for instance? Is Ukraine likely to get the sympathy vote? Oh, yes. Is Russia going to get booed? Although those two young women representing Russia seem like sweet young women, but nonetheless, are they going to get booed?